Uh, my expectation is, as we start this, you're already pretty strong at using substitution especially and possibly elimination to solve these. The main focus here is how do we take a word problem and make a system of equations out of it. In this problem, we have Helen and Athea went shopping for towels to take to college. How many of you have a brother, sister, or cousin who's gone to college? These people are buying way too many towels. Anyway, take that part out. Helen bought four bath towels and three hand towels for $72, while Althea bought three bath towels and six hand towels of the same kind for $84. How much does each type of towel cost? So what we want to do is let B equal bath towels, but it's not just bath towels, it's bath towel cost because that's the question we're being asked to solve. Let's let H then equal hand towel cost. We need to write two equations. We have two different sentences that lend us to these equations and there's one sentence for each person. Helen, her sentence reads, Helen bought four bath towels and three hand towels for $72. Try writing what you think that equation will be with the variables we've created. How many of you have an equation that looks something like mine? What form is that in? Okay. What do you think by looking at the sentence about Althea? Is it going to be in the same form or different? Same. Same. Here's Althea. She bought three bath towels. What does the B stand for? The cost of the bath towels. She's buying three of them. We don't know how much they cost. We're trying to find that out. Plus six. Six. Eight six. equals eighty-four. Mm-hmm. Question. the question was I wrote B four instead of four B. That's like using ain't instead of isn't. Does that, like the meaning is the same, but the form is what we're looking for in proper form, just like proper English. Does that make sense? Like it's not really wrong. Do you get what I mean? Okay. Now, I was asked earlier, could I use elimination to solve this? I, I could. If I rewrite this system, where this top equation has a negative 6h, I could cancel out the h term. Or I could solve this with a substitution, which quite honestly, I already solved it with substitution. And I can take a picture of my work and put it in classroom for you to look at. So let's solve this one instead with elimination to answer your question, right? So I know that I wanna take this one here and instead of solving for a single variable, we're going to change this box to say eliminate one of the variables. So instead of using substitution, we're going to use elimination. Can I show you real quick what my substitution looked like? I ended up with a fraction. There's my substitution. I had to solve for a variable, and in doing that, I ended up with a fraction. You guys know I don't like working with fractions if I can avoid it. So let's try elimination on this one. I'm going to take 4b plus 3h equals 72, or basically what Helen's receipt looked like. And I'm going to turn this 3h into a negative 6h. Why? Because Althea has a 
positive 6h. And I'm looking at this going, if I multiply this by negative 2, I'm going to get a negative 6h. So this whole equation has to be multiplied by negative 2. Why? Because I am focusing on this term right here and trying to eliminate it. I'm trying to get an opposite of that one. That I just picked that one because I thought these two looked easier to multiply and change than these two. If I tried to deal with the 4b and the 3b, I would have had to have something go to a negative 12 and the other go to a positive 12. Then I'm changing everything and that's a lot of work. If I look at this one, I can see multiplying this by negative 2 is going to get me my negative 6 and I'm only changing this equation. So, negative 2 times 4b is going to be what? Negative 2 times 4b. Uh, negative 8b. Negative 8b. Minus 6h equals negative what? Is it? Negative. I think you're right, but I don't trust my brain this morning. 72 times negative 2. Yes, I trusted you, your brain equals negative 144. Now, I'm not going to substitute and solve. I'm going to eliminate and solve. So I'm going to take the equation that I changed and I'm going to put it first. This is Helen's equation just multiplied by negative 2. Negative 8b minus 6h equals negative 144. And then I'm going to bring down Althea's equation and put it underneath so I can combine them. 3b plus 6h equals 84. What's getting eliminated here? The hand towels. They're out of this one. That means right now I'm solving for the bath towel cost. I get negative 8b and positive 3b is negative 5b. Once I'm at this place, I'm just combining like terms within the equations. Equals negative 144 and positive 84. Negative 60. They're both negative, so when I divide by the negative, I'm going to end up with a positive, which makes sense because they're charging people money for these towels, so it has to be positive. Divide by B equals 12. That means I can bring down part of my solution here. It's $12 for bath towels. Now, every time we use elimination, the first one we eliminate, but the second one we substitute. We're going to take this and we're going to go back to one of the original equations and put in what we now know about bath towels and find out the hand towels. What do you want to use, Helen's or Althea's? Helen, Althea. I heard Helen first. Uh, and honestly, I kind of like using Helen's because it proves we can use the same equation in both places and we're going to get the right answer no matter what. 4 times 12 plus 3h equals 72. I took the original equation and I plugged in the 12 where the b was and I get 48 plus 3h equals 72. If I subtract 48 from both sides, 72 minus 48 is 24. 48 plus 3h minus 48 leaves us with just 3h. I divide by 3 and how much are hand towels? Eight. Eight dollars for hand towels. That's a lot. And I can write better than that. Again, I solved this with substitution the first time. I will leave my work underneath this video in classroom so you guys can compare. Questions before we move on to setting up the other equation you asked about or the other system? Okay, which one did you guys ask about? 
Marcy? Okay. The money ones. So there's always in the money ones things that you, the problem assumes you know. It assumes you know how much coins are worth. So we have dimes and we have quarters. What's something we already know about dimes? How would we write that as a decimal? 0 0.1. And quarters? 0.05. Okay, so we need that in our heads because when we find out the part of the equation that's gonna have a total amount of money, we have to plug in how much the coins are worth. So Marcy has a total of 100 times and quarters. That is one equation. We're gonna let D equal dimes and let Q equal quarters. The first sentence, I'm gonna read it again, is a simple equation. Marcy has a total of 100 dimes and quarters. How would we write that as an equation? D plus Q equals 100. Does that make sense just with that first sentence? Yes. Okay, the second one is gonna give us a dollar amount. That's where this information we wrote up here comes into play. The total value of the coins is $14.05. How many of each coin does she have? Well, what we know is that she has dimes and she has quarters and she has $14.05. We also know that dimes are 0.1 and quarters are 0.25 or 25 hundredths, right? So we're going to write this as 0.1 is the value of a dime plus 0.25 is the value of a quarter and the total value she has is 14.05. And with that, you should be able to take the top equation and solve it for a single variable, substitute that amount into one of the equations, the second one, and get a value, and then solve for the other value. Okay?